Hey everyone, Vanessa here from Love Riley. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be sewing up the Park Backpack by David and Rosie. This backpack is just incredibly gorgeous. <gasps> Look at it. It is beautiful. This is only the second backpack I've ever made and I definitely can see me making a lot more of these. And I can't believe I made this bag. So this is the front. We've got a front zipper pocket. I've just used waterproof canvas. I do go over all my materials in the video. So you've got a front pocket there. There were some slight modifications that I made to this front pocket. And I do go over those, especially if you're using vinyl in the video in terms of having my zipper tabs come all the way into my seam and what measurements I did cut this zipper to be like the shape of this bag is just amazing and then our back this is so adorable i did change the handle from half an inch to one inch again i do go over that in the pattern but i absolutely love this i put webbing on the back of the straps but did those out of vinyl it does have a back zipper pocket. I do go over that as well because I do assemble this different to what's in the pattern. But it goes all the way to the edge. So it is a really good size zipper pocket. And I just love it. I love everything about this. The vinyl that I used here I got from Mir Zen and it's their Animal Swirl vinyl. It is a very soft vinyl so I'm glad that I interfaced it the way that I did. I do go over when I talk about the pattern, all the interfacing that I did. So let's look at the inside of this bag. And it is finished with binding. That's the inside. The waterproof canvas I had custom printed through by the Bay Craft Supplies. I just added a slip pocket to the back. On the other side, it doesn't have anything. I've just left it as is. You could add another zipper pocket if you want. The structure that this bag has is absolutely amazing. It's just fantastic. And then that's the base of the bag. And I love it. I absolutely love it. There were some challenges in making this bag when I sewed it up. I'm going to keep those in the video, so hopefully you'll learn. Um, I actually had to redo this whole front pocket again because my machine tore up my vinyl as I was coming back down here because my vinyl is so soft but I had to order some more supplies so that I could get this bag finished but it is amazing and it's just incredible. I did choose to do one inch strap handle. I also did straps at one inch. So when I originally did this, I actually cut my straps wider because I wanted the webbing. I wanted you to be able to see a little bit of the brown on either side. But when I came to sew it onto the bag, they were too wide and my hardware wouldn't fit. And one and a half inch just looked silly. Not only that, I forgot to put my slide connectors on when I assembled the bag before I actually put the straps on so when I got to assembling the straps I don't know what I was thinking but I just had nothing like I couldn't put them together so I actually did have to go and redo that I cut this bit wider again I'll leave that in the video so then you'll learn you would never have known unless you're the pattern designer and you thought mm, that looks a bit different but Apart from that, I'm absolutely amazed at how incredible this bag is. And this pattern, again, so very well written and very adaptable, especially when it was written mainly for people that use cotton. And I went ahead and used vinyl. And I'm not sad that I did. So if you'd like to see me sew up this park mini backpack then please keep watching okay so let's go over our pattern pieces the brown vinyl that i'm using is an animal swirl vinyl that i got from mir zen i've got two straps i've not interfaced this at all i've marked a line down the center and i've added my double-sided tape this i have cut different to what's in the pattern so that i'm finished with a one inch strap because that's going to measure the same size as my handle and i'm also going to use 
webbing on the back of these. So I've got two of these. Oh look, my teenager, my almost teenager made me some scones from scratch and bought them to me. How cute is that? This here is pattern piece A. It's our front top exterior. I've got one of these out of my main vinyl. Decaville light out of the seam allowances and I've basted that with foam. So you only need one of those. This here is pattern piece B and it's our front bottom exterior. I've got one of these Decaville light out of my seam allowances and I've basted that with foam. So one of those and I've got two lining pieces. This is a waterproof canvas that I had custom printed through by the Bay Craft Supplies and I've not interfaced that with anything. So two lining and one exterior. This is pattern piece C and it's our front lining and you only need one of those. This here is pattern piece D, it's our back exterior. I have done this a little bit differently to what's in the pattern. So what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and I've traced on the pattern piece you've got the cutout for your zipper pocket I've gone ahead and I've put that on my main pattern piece and I've cut out the foam and the decaville from where that's going to be placed now in the pattern it actually calls for three linings because their zipper goes through to the back of the bag I'm not doing that so I've got one lining at the full piece and then what I've done is I've cut out two extra linings. I've marked an inch from the top placement of this zipper box, which is exactly the same as the pattern. And I've cut off a top, the top inch. So that when I actually line this up on my bag, all I have to do is line it up like that, cut the box, and then I'm guaranteed that the box is going to be in the cutout. And then I've got the other lining. I will trim this down, but I don't want to do it yet because I want to make sure that that's lined. So I have got two of my smaller pieces and one full size, and then one of my exterior. Again, Decaville light out of my seam allowances and foam. Pattern piece E is our lower gusset, and you want one exterior and one lining. Again, this piece I've actually used Decaville heavy, and foam on this piece but the Decaville Heavy is out of my seam allowance and then my lining not interfaced pattern piece F is our back side gusset I've got one exterior and one lining again Decaville light out of my seams and then basted with foam and I've left my waterproof canvas uninterfaced so one of each of those then we have pattern piece G which is our front side gusset and it's exactly the same as the lower gusset. One exterior, one lining, Decaville light out of my seams and then foam and waterproof canvas for my lining not interfaced. I've got a slip pocket and I'm just using waterproof canvas that I got from Mia Zen. This is their really thick waterproof canvas so I've got one of those. I've got my two rectangle ring tabs and I've not interfaced these with anything. I've got my side strap connector, not interfaced at all. I've got my strap anchor and I've just marked my line down the center and I've not interfaced that at all. This is my handle and this I have cut different to what's in the pattern because I want it to be an inch when it's finished. So this here I've cut to two and a quarter inches just because I wanna have a little bit of this shown when I put my webbing on the back so this is one inch webbing and I just want a little bit to be shown so I've cut those two different to what's in the pattern in the pattern it's actually a half an inch handle so that's it for all my pattern pieces this I've cut to the same length as my backpack straps because I want this to be on the opposite side so I've got my webbing there my binding I'm just using fold over elastic zipper tape I'm just using number five continuous zipper tape and then hardware. I've got three zipper pulls. How cute are those? Three of those. I've got two one inch triangle rings. I just prefer these on backpack straps rather than rectangle rings. So I've got two of those. I've got two one inch wide mouth slide adjusters. 
and these are obviously for our backpack straps and I've got two swivel clasps as well and then I have my name plate and I think that's it if there's anything else that I've forgotten I'll leave a note on the screen so let's start sewing up this bag as always I'm going to start with my straps I'm going to fold both edges into the meat in the middle I do not need to leave a gap because this is going to get webbing on the back of it and so because I don't need to fold it over again I don't need to leave that gap so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold them into the middle then I'm going to add a half inch piece of double sided tape in the center and that's where I'm going to stick my webbing onto and hopefully this won't try and lift up so far this vinyl is behaving very nicely it's not trying to lift up on me which is good this vinyl is so beautiful and the I'm using a size 21 needle and the thread that I'm using is from ProSo and I believe it's the equivalent of a Tex 70. It is extremely important with webbing to go ahead and heat seal the ends because they do like to fray. Do not put your finger on there or it's going to melt onto your finger. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove this tape and I'm going to stick down my webbing. And that's good because it'll fit right between those centre lines. So I'm going to stick all this down and then I'm going to do more stitching. And the best thing about double sided tape is if it's not in the centre you can just lift it up and reposition it and heat seal that end again very very well. So an eighth of an inch from that edge. That's it. Oh, that looks amazing. So that's all our stitching and then that's on the underside. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other strap and then we'll be back. Okay, swivel clasp up and over that centre bar. I'm going to do some a box stitch. and then back down then you want to put your swivel hook on right sides up and then feed it through your connector up and over the center bar and then that is ready to go onto our bag. Okay, I'm going to start with my front zipper that goes on the very front of the bag. Because I am doing this differently and because I am using vinyl, I've cut this down to be seven inches. And the zipper tabs, instead of folding them over triple like what's in the pattern, I'm actually just, I've cut them to two and a half inches long because I want them to be in my seams. Okay, so right sides together and I haven't interfaced these with anything and I'm just happy doing a single layer because I don't want it to be too bulky and I'm going to sew that on at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to fold it open and top stitch it but I'll just do the other end first. So again, right sides together, quarter of an inch. And folding these out in top stitching. 
and this side again folding it out top stitching and I can trim those down later then I'm going to go ahead and find the center of my zipper just going to do a tiny little clip and then I will heat seal that as well because you do not want that fraying So that's all prepared we can set that to the side next you want your strap anchors and your handle so I've already got the center of my handle piece I'm going to go ahead and fold those into the center and just like we did on our straps I'm going to do an eighth of an inch on each side top stitching so I'm just going to use quarter of an inch double sided tape down that center And again, I did cut my webbing longer. I'm just going to fold that back and heat seal it. An eighth of an inch. quarter of an inch from that webbing and that's our handle our strap anchor you can add double sided tape to the center fold it in the middle and I just want to do an eighth of an inch on this one This is a very soft vinyl. Next you want your rectangle rings tab and I'm going to mark a line down the center. Some double sided tape. And I'm going to fold these into the center and then these get top stitched an eighth of an inch. So once they've been top stitched you can go ahead and put your triangle rings on or your rectangle rings and I am going to base these together at the bottom. And we can sit these to the side. Next you want your side strap connectors and what we're going to do is we're going to mark a line across and we're going to cut that in half. just like so. So we've got two triangles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark three eighths of an inch from the edge of these tabs and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put that in my seam. What you want to do is put these right sides together and then we've got a finished edge, a raw edge and a raw edge. So at the top edge closest to closest to the finished edge we're going to slide in our connector where I've put that mark I'm going to leave that in my seam in the pattern it tells you to put it all the way so that it's flush but I want this left in my seam so that's where I'm going to put mine so do that on both so again we've got our finished edge a raw edge and then our longest open edge this top edge is where we're going to insert our D-ring connector or triangle ring connector, whatever you're using. And I'm going to line that up at the top and clip that in place. And then we're going to sew this at the seam allowance given in the pattern. And we're only sewing that very top edge. So 
Now I am going to come in and do a second row of stitching just beside the first one and that's just to reinforce this. Doesn't have to be pretty because no one will see it. And I'm not going to trim this down, I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it on the second piece. And again, I'm going to come back in and do that second row. Again, I'm not trimming this, so I'm turning this right sides out. And we are going to top stitch this. I think I'm first going to base the open edge. I'm just going to, just to make it easier for me. So make sure that it's all poked out. And I'm just going to base this edge before I start my top stitching. Again, poking this out. Trim that down. So because I did put that, leave that connector in the seam, I don't need to worry about going ahead and putting a rivet or a Chicago screw there. I can just leave it as it is. If you do want to add a Chicago screw or a rivet, I would wait until the very end, until these are on your bag so that you've got enough clearance. Okay, so those raw edges now are done and basted, so I don't have to worry about those moving. And I am going to do two rows of top stitching, I think. So I'm just going to start up here. And I have to be careful because this is such a soft vinyl. I'm just going to use some waterproof canvas just to protect my vinyl and my hardware and also help it come back down. So that's one row. I think I will do two rows of top stitching on this. Use my waterproof canvas again. so cute I just need to be so careful because this vinyl is so soft looks good looks fantastic now we can move on to our gusset pieces so you want piece F which is your backside gusset exterior and lining and you want piece G and I'm going to be adding double-sided tape 1 8 inch double-sided tape to the straight edges I've already gone ahead and found the center When we do this we want both straight edges facing each other we need our zipper tape and i'm going to cut mine extra long and i'm going to heat seal the end i'm going to find the center of my zipper and just clip that you can mark it if you want to i'm going to start with the bigger piece and the straight edge i've got up the top I'm going to remove the double sided tape and I'm going to place my zipper tape right sides together and I'm going to match it up in the center and I'm just going to stick that down so because you have used double sided tape you won't need to use clips but I'm going to just in case I don't normally use double sided tape but let's give it a go And using double sided tape it actually allows you to do it all in one go without having to base the zipper and then add your lining and sewing that on okay then you can get your corresponding piece of your lining so piece F and again we're working with the very straight side 
and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing so double sided tape I'm hoping this sticks it doesn't tend to stick for me and then while I've got my tape out I may as well do the lining of the other gusset piece again top edge straight edge And then we can remove the double sided tape from this and line it up in the center and clip it into place and then we can sew it. My double sided tape does not like this waterproof canvas. Okay, matching that up in the center and clipping that into place. Okay, I get why we use double sided tape because it allow it eliminates the need for a basting, but I prefer it my, <laughs> my way. I'm just worried that it's going to slip and then I'm going to end up with a wonky zipper. But it may prove me wrong, you never know. But I need to start trying things that I don't normally do, so give it a go. Okay, and we're going to sew that with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And we're going to open it up and top stitch. So because I am using foam, this is not going to want to pull down evenly so I'm going to have to clip it into place before I top stitch it because the foam is fighting. I would not recommend this to use foam like this if you are using sewing on a domestic. I would not. But I love the structure that foam gives to a bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to base this bottom edge first so that it all sits flat before I do my top stitching. And then I'm going to come up the side and start my top stitching. And that's one part of our zipper panel done. It looks fantastic and my waterproof canvas is not going to poke up in my seams and I realized I did not sew this edge. Now it's all sewn. This vinyl is just beautiful. I love it. Okay we're going to repeat for the other side. Make sure you're doing this on the straight edge. And again, I'm finding my centers and I'm going to clip that or stick that into place. Let's try and not use a thousand clips. And you also do not want to stretch your zipper tape or you're going to end up with a wavy zipper. Less clips than before. right sides together zipper sandwich I just think the more clips the better <laughs> let's sew this on full seam allowance and we're going to fold these out and top stitch Again, I'm going to line it up at the very bottom because that foam is stopping it from folding evenly. 
This is the only downside to working with foam really, is just fighting it when it comes to these zipper panels. Now I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to baste it along this bottom edge first and then top stitch. start top stitching. I'm just trying to press it down with my fingers as I go. And then that is our panel. Go ahead and put your zipper pulls on before you do the next step. I am going to trim down my zipper tape probably best to do it after you put your zipper pulls on but I've still got enough room okay one end and another one Make sure there's no weird bumps. Looks good. I'm going to leave my seam. I'm going to leave my zipper in the seam allowance. Now we want our lower gusset pieces. Right sides together, and they should be the same size. If not, you may need to trim some down. And because this bag is finished with binding, we don't need to worry about keeping our lining and our exterior separate. I'm going to base this on. Make sure your zippers are in the centre, you're not going to run over them. And then I'm going to do lining right sides together. And then this gets sewn at our full seam allowance. And then just like before, I am going to do a second row of stitching just next to the first one. Then I'm going to go up to a top stitch length. Okay, so that's sewn on. Next you want to fold these back, wrong sides together, and we're going to top stitch. And my seam is underneath my bigger gusset. And I'm going to go ahead and top stitch that. And then right sides together, I'm going to base this into place. Okay, that's basted on. And I'm going to do the same thing with my lining. Right sides together. And then this gets sewn at our full seam allowance. And then I'm going to do my second row of stitching. Then I've got to fold it out. And we're going to top stitch this side. So again, my seams are pointing towards the lower gusset. I'm making sure it's flat. Now what I want to do is Pull this so that it all becomes one piece so it's taut and I'm going to baste the open edge of these two panels so I'm pulling these so that they're lining up and then that's going to make one big loop Now if this wasn't a bound bag, these would need to be separated, but because this is a bound bag, we don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to do that on both sides.
then all I'm going to do is just do a basting stitch around where I've clipped. There's one side. Now just be careful what stitch like or what seam you're using for your basting stitch because this isn't a very big seam allowance on this bag. And then that's it. That is our gusset and panel done. If you need to trim it up at all, go ahead and do that now. Also, before you set this aside, it would be great now to find your center points on your panels. I've already done mine. So we can set this to the side. That is going to look so good. Okay. In the pattern, it actually tells you to sew your binding onto your gusset now. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it the way that I normally do it. So I can start working on my front of the backpack. I want all my front, bottom, exterior and lining and the top flat piece. I want those. And you also want the zipper that we prepared earlier. I'm going to use double sided tape because this is a curve. So you want your bottom exterior and I'm going to put double sided tape just along that curve. And I'm going to repeat that with one of my lining pieces as well. And I've already gone ahead and found the centre of these. And I'm going to add double sided tape to the curved edge of this as well. We want our bottom exterior. I'm going to remove the double sided, the backing off the double sided tape. And then I'm going to put my zipper right sides together and my zipper is closing to the left. I'm going to center that and stick this down. My zipper tabs are going to go into the seam. That is exactly what I want. And I will trim these down when I am finish this part. Okay, I'm going to move my zipper and I'm going to... I'll do it the way that it says in the pattern. Take the double sided... Backing off the double sided tape and put that right sides together and we'll match all this up. And we do sew completely to the end. Make sure your zipper pulls out of the way and I'm sewing this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And then I can do my zipper up now that I've sewn that part. And then that gets pushed back oh, and top stitched. I'm going to match up the centre bottom. Clip these together before I top stitch because that foam is fighting me. Okay, and then we can come, here, come in and top stitch. Okay, I'm going to leave my clips there. Next you want your flap part. I'm going to match up the centers, so I'm going to remove this tape. That's going to stick to everything but what I need it to. And then match the centers and clip it. Undo your zipper, it might help. Yes, it does. It's best to try and work the top 
flap part into the zipper rather than the other way around because you do not want that zipper to stretch because then you're going to end up with a wavy zipper. It's probably best to sew it from the zipper side. Okay, let's, I'm going to base this on. zip out. Then I'm going to get my other lining piece and I'm going to line that up right sides together and I'm going to sew that into place using the full seam allowance given in the pattern. So I've got that all lined up. I'm going to sew this at the seam allowance given in the pattern. Make sure that your zipper is out of the way. I'm going to open my zipper and I'm going to sew it from this side. Now, what I've done is I've added double-sided tape to that lining part and I've re-clipped it. I've moved you up a little bit higher so hopefully my hand doesn't get in the way. Now I'm trying to work out what best way to sew this is. I think I'm going to try and sew it from the lining side. Full seam allowance. how that went. Just going to trim down these tabs a little bit. Oh good okay yes. So then this is what we have. So this is the lining that we just sewed on. I'm going to trim my zipper tabs Okay, so I've trimmed my zipper tabs so that it's all completely even. Then what we want to do with the lining piece that we just sewed on, as you can see, it's shorter than our other lining piece. We want to go ahead and we want to pull this down so that they all line up at the bottom. So go ahead, pull all those down and line all those up. Clip those into place because what happens is when we pull this zipper pop when we pull this lining down it creates this 3d puffiness at the side then you want to go ahead and just line up your seams we're going to clip this into place and then we're going to baste all of this together so that it's one piece and then that will be our front So I'm going to start up here and I'm just going to base the whole thing around. And then once I've done that, I can go ahead and put my nameplate on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install my nameplate and then we'll be back. So I've got my exterior, I've got my lining, and then I've got my two zipper pieces. 
I did explain this in the pattern part of this video, but I'll do it again. I took the pattern and I cut down two inches from the top edge. I went ahead and I transferred the zipper box placement on my lining piece. I will be trimming that down further, but I need to sew it on first. So I'm going to start with that. So the reason that I transferred it as I did is so that I can line it up as it would be if it was my lining piece. And I know that this zipper box is going to match this cutout that I made earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and click this into place. And then I can go ahead and sew that zipper box on. So once this is sewn into place and I know that it is where it's meant to be, I'm actually going to come in and trim this side here because we don't need that to be in the seam but I need it now to be able to sew this on properly so I'm just going to go ahead and sew around my zipper box sewn on and then if I look at the underside I can see that it's within that box it's within that cutout so that's going to make it a lot easier when it comes to turn it I am going to come in and trim just a little bit more away okay now I can get rid of all my clips I can also come in and trim down this here I do want to leave a little bit though to sew our other zipper pocket piece onto so I've cut away maybe an inch and I can cut it away from the bottom as well I want to leave the top though and I also want to leave it here because I want to catch it in the seam and now using my half inch ruler that I got from Brimax I'm going to come in half an inch from the end of my zipper box and mark a line. And I'm going to do that on both edges. Just like so. Then I'm going to fold this in half. And you want a very sharp pair of scissors. And I'm going to make a cut there. And then start cutting this down. Now, when I get to that half inch mark. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come out and do a V just here. I want to go up to the stitches but not through the stitches. Don't cut through them. But go as close as you can to them. And the longer that you leave the V, the easier it is to sew it into the seam and less chance that your zipper is going to come back through. So again, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this lining piece to the back. Now if you were using cotton, you'd be able to go and press this, but because I'm using vinyl, a little bit harder. I'm just going to work it and fold it to the back and I'm going to put some clips on there to hold it while I do this next step. You don't want to see any of that lining. So that's what it's looking like so far. And then you want to do the same for this side. You can tape it if you need to. That's what it's looking like so far. Now I'm just going to leave that to the side to sit for a little bit and I'm going to work on my zipper. Before I go ahead and put my zipper 
pull on. I'm just going to go ahead and put 8th inch double sided tape on my zipper. Okay, now I'm going to put my zipper pull on. Okay, this isn't going to hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use masking tape. I'm going to hold all this back with masking tape and hope that it stays out of my way. I'm going to put some eighth inch double sided tape along here and hope that it sticks to that. Okay, so I'm going to remove this double sided tape here. Now, make sure that your zipper is pointing up to the roof. And you want to go ahead and center that. I'm going to stick that side down and then when I'm happy that that's stuck I'm going to remove this side and then this side and you can just readjust it as you need to Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here and then I can resituate this bit. I'm going to pull my threads to the back. So I'm going to make sure I leave long tails and I'm not going to back stitch. Now that I'm here, I can go ahead and do my zipper up. And then I can resituate this to make sure that it's even, not crooked. I'm going to come to the back and I'm going to pull all my threads th through and tie them off. can also trim down this zipper tape because I do not need that much. And I can get rid of my masking tape because I do not need that anymore. That served its purpose. Now I need my other lining piece. Right sides together. Again, I can match up these bottoms and I can trim it. I'm going to line these up and I'm going to trim this down. What I'm going to do first is fold this back and I'm going to sew the top. The seam allowance for this is given in the pattern. And then I'm going to unzip that. I'm going to pull this across and I'm going to sew these two sides together. Now, it is really important that you catch those little V's that we made earlier because that's what's going to stop this from pulling back through. So I've just back stitched over that a few times. Now I'm not going to worry about sewing this bottom because I am going to sew that into the seam. 
but I'll come back and baste that. Okay, folding this side in and stitching this closed. Again, you make you want to make sure that you sew over those triangles. Now what I want to do is I just want to baste all these together so it's all one piece. And then I can go ahead and trim off the excess if I need to. And doing this ensures that your zipper is not going to be floppy inside your lining. So as you can see, I caught it. Just trim this down. I don't need that anymore. And then that is my completed zipper pocket. Love it. So this is my back piece. So that's going to go on there and then that's going to be the inside of the back of my bag. I'm going to put a slip pocket here. This is... Wow. Okay, I'm going to place this right sides together and I'm going to sew it up both of the seam, both side seams and I'm doing it a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to turn it right sides out. I am going to trim down the sides here so that I get more of a smoother turn. You don't want to cut it down too much because our seam allowance isn't big. Turn that right sides out. Poke out those sides. It's just, that's just a flute cleaner that I got from my local music shop. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to baste the top because I'm going to put a trim piece on. I'm going to do the trim piece a little bit different to what I normally do because normally I have trouble getting both sides to top stitch. I usually get one and not the other. So what I'm going to do is this is also a great place to put a woven label. I might use that one. This was handmade by me using a ton of passion, money and time. You'd better love it or else. Let's do the trim piece. I'm going to do this eight inches and I'm going to do it one and a half inches wide, I think. Okay. So from the top edge, I'm going to mark down five eighths of an inch and I'm going to put double sided tape on either side of that line and this is quarter inch double sided tape then I'm going to remove the top piece I've got the smaller of my seams at the top I'm going to go ahead and lay the top of my pocket along that line then I'm going to remove the other double sided tape and I'm going to fold this over now that's a lot extra but you're not going to see that from the other side and I'm guaranteed to catch it that's what I'm going to do I'm going to pin this, put this into place and then I'm going to pop this underneath Make sure it's straight and I'm going to top stitch that. I'm going to do it an eighth of an inch from this bottom edge and then an eighth of an inch from the top edge as well. On, and on the back side completely fine. That is how I'm going to do these from now on. And then an eighth of an inch from the top edge as well. This final is so smooth. Trim that off. And that side. And look. 
fantastic. Find the center. Okay, in the pattern it'll tell you how far up we put our slip pocket from the bottom. So I'm just going to mark that. And then I'm going to line up the center. Now because this is a small slip pocket, I'm not going to do the center divider. I'm just going to use these hemming clips and this will hold this in place while I sew it. I just got these from eBay. I'll leave a link below. But they're fantastic, they hold it in place. Well, we sew it on and we can top stitch this on. And that's that. <laughs> Love it. If you did want to, you could go ahead and just um, create like a pen holder. But I'm just going to leave mine as is. And then that is my lining done. So that is going to go on the back of my back pocket. But we need to install everything on this first. Okay, next we want our straps, our D-ring connectors, our handle and our anchor strap. Now, on your pattern piece it's got placement lines of where you want to go ahead and put your strap anchor. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark those on both sides. Now I'm just going to go ahead and mark those because it's just going to be easier for me to see. And you do want to go ahead and find your centre as well. Centre top and centre bottom. And you want to mark that too. I'm going to run a piece of half inch double sided tape just here. Not in any seams. I'm going to get my strap. And I'm going to place it so that each side lines up with that center line, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this double sided tape. And I'm going to stick this down. You want to make sure that it's not twisted. And I'm going to base that on. So this is also going through the seam of my zipper pocket but that's fine because it's still out of the way. Okay next we want to put our connectors on. So it gives you a measurement in the pattern of how far up we want to go. So go ahead and place your marks and then we can go ahead and base these on. Now you just want to make sure that when you're putting these on they're facing up. And again facing up and I can go ahead and base these on and then this side ok 
going to add a row of double sided tape along here. I do have to cut another strap anchor because I had to remove mine so that I could redo the straps. I'm going to have to make it a little bit wider so that it covers up the holes that I created the first time that I sewed it on. I've just made this half an inch bigger than the original one and let's see if that will cover it. And I have made it longer. I'll just trim off all the excess. And I'll put double sided tape down the centre. Let's try this. Yes, that's well and truly going to cover it. Fantastic. Okay, so our straps. I'm facing this right side down so that when it's on the bag and it's turned over, this is the side that we're seeing. So I've got mine, I'm going to line it up, this very corner, this outer edge, with the line that I made earlier. I can still see that. And I'm going to butt it right up against our handle. I'm just going to clip that into place for the moment. I'll get my other strap. And I'll do the same. Right up against that handle. On that line that I created earlier. And then when you're wearing it on the back. This will fold down. Okay. I'm going to base that on. right through that double sided tape and then I can put my strap anchor over the top I'm just trying to hide the needle holes that I made earlier so now that that's on I'm going to top stitch that in place I'm going to do it an eighth of an inch from both edge, outer edge, to begin with. Then I'll come in an eighth of an inch from that stitch line. Okay, that's done. Now it's up to you if you want to do another row, but I'm happy with those two rows. Now I can trim off that excess. Okay, now that that's all done, I can go ahead and baste the back on, the lining. So that's what it's going to look like when the straps are down. Love it. You could go ahead and put a Chicago screw through there if you wanted to, but I'm just leaving it. This is my back lining, so I'm going to place that wrong sides together. I'm just going to put a couple of clips just to hold it all in place so I can baste it. I'm going to baste it from the exterior. Be very careful with your basting seam for this because it is a very small seam allowance. Make sure you move everything out of your way. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Fantastic. Now we can go ahead and clip it all together. Now I am going to be using staples. Okay, here's my gusset. What I have already done is I have gone ahead and I have just mark I have just clipped an eighth of an inch around all my gusset, just little snips, just to make sure that this sits in perfectly and it all lines up. Now make sure that when you're putting this together that you do it the right way. I've turned it inside out so my lining's up. The smaller of your top panels, 
is the front of our bag. Here's the front of our bag. I'm going to go ahead and put that right sides together. So I'm matching up the front of my bag with the smaller of my gusset tops and I'm going to start clipping this into place. And I am, as I said before, going to use staples as well because it just it's not going to go anywhere if I do that. So I'm just going to put a couple at the top and then start at the bottom. And I have already marked all my centers as I went along. Now it would not be wise to increase the seam allowance for this part because if you do you risk hitting your zipper tabs and you don't want that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a base stitch just here where I've put these clips just to hold it in place and then I can go ahead and I can start stapling it. It just ensures that this isn't going to move. That's it for that. I'm only doing a straight edge. I'm not doing any of the curves yet. And then at the top, I'm just going to do a basting stitch where my clips are. No, I'm not, because it's wanting to move. I'm going to undo this, which I think will help. And I'm going to staple it. Now, because this, again, because this is such a small seam allowance, you need to be really careful with your staples. So I'm just going to do three at the top and I am going to put clips there as well just for reinforcement and then I'm going to start working all of this into this gusset and because I put those those little snips in there it's just going to fit a lot easier I think. Before I do any more staples I think what I'll do is I will clip it all and then I'll do the staples just to make sure that it's all fit and it's all where it's meant to be before I commit to putting the staples in and it's going to be really thick here on the side if you are using a domestic and you want to do foam do not leave it in your seam allowances so I'm just working that back panel into that gusset and because I did clip it that's why it's going in a lot easier than normal. I really don't think I'm going to be able to put a staple there. I think it's going to be too thick but we shall try. Okay that's one side on and clipped. Now I can go ahead make sure that it looks good from the inside and then I can go ahead and staple and I'm going to use a lot basically the more staples I can use the better okay I'm going to go ahead and staple all of this clip all this and then I'll be back to start sewing it I've got all of this clipped on and all of the staples in. I'm going to baste it. I think it'll be easier to do it from this way. I'm going to baste it on at an eighth of an inch. And of course I put all my clips upside down, didn't I? I'm just going to use my screwdriver just to hold, try and hold everything in place so that nothing shifts. Just like it did there. I will have to change my needle after this bag because I am hitting some of those staples.
Okay, let's see how we did. I'm going to turn the bag sort of inside out just to see if there's any big holes. Now I can see that it's not basted just here. So I'm going to put a clip there so I know that I've got to re-sew that. Where it slipped just here, I'm just going to trim that down so that it's even. Just here, I'm going to trim this so that it's even. Now, I completely missed right here where that really thick part is. So I'm going to come back and sew that. So there's a couple of sp parts that I have to come back and sew because I completely missed the basting stitch. And I'm just going to come around again. It's not going to hurt. It is so thick right here. And then just here is where I missed before. Okay, now I can go ahead and take out all my staples. You want to make sure you get them all. And be very careful if they break off that you get every single bit out just like that one. And then while I'm here, I'm just going to trim up just around here so that it's all even. Because that's going to make a big difference when we come to do our binding. So this is just fold over elastic and I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way around. And I am just going to pull on it very slightly just to make it taut. I'm just going to put a couple of clips to begin with and then I'll come back and readjust it. Now you want to make sure that you get it on both sides. Fold that under. Now what I want to do, now that I've done that, is I want to go ahead and turn it over and make sure that I've got it even or as close to even as I can on both sides. Um, again, you don't want to see, like right here, it's really, really not even. And you potentially are going to see a basting stitches. So I just want to bring a little bit more over. clips are flying off everywhere. How many clips do you reckon I've broken on this so far? 
pan right here it's not pulled over enough so we need to fix that now luckily for me with this fold over elastic there is sort of a center line that you can see so I'm just trying to make sure that that's on the edge and then I'll check it from the other side and then if that's all good we'll be right to sew that on yes okay, okay. I've changed my thread let's get sewing this I'm going to start at an eighth of an inch and then I'll do my full seam allowance And I just went off there. I felt it. Yeah, that's not even sewing it on. So I'm just going to come back a bit. And try that again. It is really, really thick right here. It's trying to push me off. I wasn't even sewing that on. Try, see what that looks like, and then I'm going to do my full seam allowance. It's not the prettiest, but it's okay. Okay, now I'm going to do it at my full seam allowance. Don't be afraid to manipulate your bag. Now here is where it's going to be really, really thick. Did mm, okay. Okay. Oh no, that is terrible. What I've done is I've come in and I've checked through this side just to see what it looks like. And I can still see some of my basting stitches. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do another row of stitching and I'm going to increase my seam allowance. Um, 
I don't know how this is going to go because it is different to what's in the pattern. But that's the only way that I can think that I'm going to be able to not see these stitches on the outside. So... I don't even know if that was enough. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I just need to come in more at this side. Luckily for me, I can still see where my brown stitching is. So I can just come on the inside of that. Let's see how that did. Much better. Okay, we'll turn it out. Let's see how we did. I am not at all confident with that. <laughs> I mean, normally I don't struggle with binding, but for some reason this is just not wanting to play nice. I mean, I guess the good thing is that I can still see where I need to come in just a little bit. So just here, I need to come in a little bit because you can see my basting stitches. I don't know why. Turn it back out. Then we get to do it all again. Okay, one side done, which is the front side, now the back side. And because I did increase my seam allowance, I'm going to increase it on this side, obviously. But because of that, I'm going to baste it on at a quarter of an inch. I think that's just going to be a lot easier.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip all this into place, staple it, and then we'll come back to sew it. Okay, I'm back. What I did was I went ahead, I stapled everything, I basted it all together at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I've added my binding and now we're ready to sew that on. I am going to base this on at a quarter of an inch and then increase my seam allowance as I did on the opposite side. You want to make sure that your zipper is open and all of your handles and everything else are out of the way. Now when you get up here you want to be careful because this is where your straps are. And you do not want to sew through those straps. So I'm pulling my handle, my straps, everything out. good on that side now I just want to go ahead and make sure that I've caught everything as you can see from my handles there's not a lot of space there so I've just turned it inside out to check much better so it was a lot better that time starting my stitching at a quarter of an inch turn it back the wrong way and then all I've got to do is my final seam which will be at three eighths of an inch and then that should be it. Let's do this. Again, make sure that nothing is caught in your seams because your handles, uh, your straps can quite easily go down the bottom. Okay, now here's where my strap is, so I've got to be very careful. where the other one is okay now here's where my connector is make sure that your hardware for your connector is out of the way Um, go back 
back to the beginning. Now, I just want to come in and sew this here down within the seam allowance because it's sticking up and I don't want that. doesn't have to be pretty it's at the bottom of the bag it's time to turn it right sides out just grab a corner and if it does get too hard I mean it shouldn't be too hard because it is bound but if it does get too hard because of the vinyl that you've chosen you can use a hairdryer to heat up the vinyl to make it softer to make it easier to turn oh mine look pretty good I'm so glad I didn't get these straps in my seam allowance. Love the way that binding finishes the seams and just gives a bag its structure. So just go ahead and press all your seams into place. And then we can clip these on. And there it is, our Park Mini Backpack by Rosie and David. Oh my goodness, it is adorable. <gasps> Look at it. I mean, this, just the whole shape of the gusset that it gives. It's like a big, it's the three, I don't know. I love it. So here we've got our front zipper pocket which is the perfect size for your phone and keys and <coughs> lip gloss chapstick oh, look at that I'm so glad that I made the decision to make this smaller and put my zipper tabs in the seam <coughs> I'm really happy with this and then we've got our top gusset. The shape that this gives the bag is just incredible. Wow. And then this is the back. Like, look at the back. Another zipper pocket, which is goes right through. Just great size. And the handles. And then our top grab handle oh, wow. I love it and I'm not a backpack person but I could quite easily see myself carrying this and then we have our inside we have our slip pocket on the back oh love it I really, really, really love it. The shape of it. I really thought that it would be... I didn't realise it would be this big. But this gusset just makes it look huge. I would recommend if you are going to do foam, if you're going to do vinyl, what I would recommend would be to cut this down to 7 inches, maybe even 6.5 and have your zipper tabs go into your seam 
when I redid the front of this bag because my vinyl got eaten by my machine when I did the tabs I actually interfaced them because this vinyl is so soft I didn't want that to happen again um, if you're using say a marine vinyl or a really thick vinyl I would not interface these zipper tabs at all try and keep everything light the only thing that I think I will change is maybe not to do Decaville heavy on the base but I don't know because I love the way that it looks. I am really happy that I ended up doing a 3 8 inch seam allowance especially when it came to basting everything on so I probably would do that again. If you're going to do that you just need to make sure that everything is placed correctly because there is not much room at all at the top here between your seam and these handles so if you're going to do it the same as I did just keep that in mind I'm so happy with how this looks and how it turned out so thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you on the next video have an amazing day bye mm -hmm.